Hi, hi, hello, welcome. Welcome to the world of zoology. Myself, Dr. Sai from Zoology Wala. My dear friends, in previous sessions, I explained all the skeletal components in the human being body in detail. And I explained cockroach also completely. As far as muscles are concerned, in previous sessions, I explained the types of muscles, I explained uh, the different types of movements which are present inside the human being body and different types of uh, movements in overall organisms and I explained the structure of muscle. If you observe the immediate video what I just covered previously, that video contains the structure of muscle and now I am going to explain you about ultra structure of muscle. If you observe uh, the filaments, if you observe the muscle filaments, for example, if you observe the muscle, entire muscle is covered by epimysium which contains a number of bundles of muscle fibers. Each bundle of muscle fiber contains a bundle. The bundle of muscle fibers is called fascicle, contains number of muscle fibers. Inside the fiber, number of fibrils are present. Inside the fibril, number of filaments are present. And now I am going to show you what are those uh, filaments, what are those proteins. If you observe the electron microscopic view of the thin filament, it appears like this. If you remember the diagram of, uh, if you remember the diagram of uh, sarcomia, <coughs> say this is uh, one thin filament and this is another thin filament. So like that number of thin filaments are present and to whom uh, these thin filaments will bind? The thin filaments will go and articulate with whom? With whom? I will take another color. The thin filaments will go and articulate with uh, a membrane called Z line. This is Z line, and again these are thin filaments, and again these are thin filaments, isn't it? And in the center of uh, the thin filaments, where you can observe uh, the thick filaments. So these are thick filaments, isn't it? So I explained this in uh, the last class. Now what I want, what about the structure of uh, this thin filament? See this one, if you observe the electron microscopic view of that particular thin filament, how that electron microscopic view appears? It appears like this. For example, it contains one G protein. So this is called a G protein, G for globular protein, G protein. What is G protein? G protein is nothing but the globular protein, okay, globular protein. Number of globular proteins combined to form one filament that is called filamentous protein. Just to have some idea, imagine. So here I am going to represent you about the filaments. So here these are all the actin proteins which forms uh, as uh, a layer. So a layer of uh, proteins which are spirally twisted like this. And these are nothing but the proteins. If, if you consider the single protein, it is a globular protein. If all proteins combined, it forms a filamentous protein. So this is F protein. This is F protein, F uh, filamentous, filamentous protein. And now, in addition to this, you can see another protein which is also spirally coiled. What is that spirally coiled protein? That is tropomyosin. Something a thread like structure, a, a thread like structure. I will show you the thread like structure. So, this is a, the thread like structure. You can see the thread like structure like this, and like this, like this, like this. So, a thread like structure is present, and this structure which is present represented here is a tropomyosin. So, tropomyosin is also a filamentous structure. F I L A M E N T O U S, filamentous. So, tropomyosin is also a filamentous structure, and uh, this G protein, this one, if combined to form, it also encompasses the filamentous protein. So, you can see a filamentous protein here, and you can see the G protein. If all G proteins combine, that is also a filamentous protein. And now, another important structure over uh, the tropomyosin, listen carefully, over the tropomyosin not over the actin, over the tropomyosin intermittently at regular distances, there you can see a very important structure is present. I think uh, this color is visible, oh very good, it is clearly visible. 
So, like this a complex protein is present which is in fact uh, which is in fact the subunit of uh, three components and this is the complex protein this is the complex protein what is this complex protein see I will represent here and the complex protein is formed because of the combination of uh, three proteins what is this one in fact these three subunits finally forms troponin T R O P O N I N troponin is a protein my dear friend actin is a protein and tropomyosin is also protein tropomyosin is a protein and the thin filament contains all these components and now the troponin contains uh, three subunits what are those three subunits it contain tpt troponin is represented with tp or tn we can call this as a tp or tn for troponin so tpt means uh, tp for troponin t for tropomyosin t for tropomyosin tp for troponin the place where troponin and tropomyosin attaches or adsorbs is nothing but tpt and this is the place called tpi and this is the place called tpc what do you mean by tpc tpc for calcium ions so it is the guest house for calcium ions why i call guest house i will tell and this is tpi i for inhibitor i for inhibitor inhibitor complex is going to inhibit something what it going to inhibit i will tell okay so tptt -T for tropomyosin and this i for inhibitor and c for calcium these are the three subunits of uh, troponin so these are all the three types of proteins which forms the thin filament so each thin filament is formed by number one number one actin number two tropomyosin number three troponin troponin contains three subunits like this and these three among these three you know actin protein is bulk actin protein is the protein which majorly forms the thin filaments that is the reason why the thin filaments are also called actin filaments that is the reason why I have not used the actin filament till now and now we have an idea what is actin what is troponin what is tropomyosin these are the three proteins which forms the thin filament the thin filament is also called actin filament thin filament is also called actin filament and now let us move to the thick filament what is this thick filament and this one is a thick filament let us take a small part of the thick filament and observe under microscope how it appears how it appears I will show see it was already here see this is a tropomy this is a the thick filament the thick filament is made with this structure what is this structure this is called meromyosin this is one meromyosin my dear friends each meromyosin contains two heavy chains like this the heavy chains are wrapped around like this like the snakes these two heavy chains are wrapped like this and they are just projected a bit okay they are projected a bit upward like that a bit upward like that and this is nothing but the short arm you can see a small you can see a small structure like this this one this is called short <coughs> sorry this is called short arm and this is the head and this is short arm head plus short arm combinedly forms uh, the cross arm not cross bridge cross arm cross arm is different short arm is different cross bridge is different so head plus neck combined to form neck neck is nothing but short arm so head and short arm combined to form cross arm and this is the tail portion and this is the tail portion so tail portion is called l m m l m m means a light miro myosin and head so called this short arm combinedly forms as i said cross arm it is a part of H M M. What do you mean by H M M? This is H M M means a heavy H A V Y heavy myosin. Heavy myosin. This is light myosin and this is heavy myosin. Imagine now my forearm. This is called light. This is the tail one, light myosin, and this is the neck and this is head, globular head. And now this forms a heavy myosin and this forms a light myosin. 
So each each myosin, each myosin thick filament is formed by these myromyosins. Around 200 to 300 myromyosin molecules uh, forms one thick filament. My dear friends, you have to remember very carefully. So one thick filament is formed by these myromyosins. How many myromyosins forms one thick filament means nearly 200 to 300 myromyosin molecules forms one thick filament. Say so this is one thick filament. If I just observe the electron microscopic view of this thick filament, it appears like this. This is called one myromyosin molecule like that. How many myromyosin molecules are present? 300 myromyosin molecules are present. For example, if you observe, see this one now. This is the head and neck. Let me take a different color. See this one. This is the head, neck and tail, head, neck, tail, head, neck, tail. See the heads are present like this, isn't it? And sometimes of course the head may be directed in opposite directions like this. So head, neck, tail, head, neck, tail, head, neck, tail. And all the tails are present towards the center of A band. The center of A band is called H zone, I explained in my previous session. So all the thick filaments are directed towards the H zone all the thick filaments are present, all, all the tails of the myromycin molecules are present towards the H zone. So head and neck will be lifted like this forming a, the cross arm. You have to remember very important in the examination point of view, cross arm is formed by how many myromycins forms one thick filament, it may be asked, okay. And head and neck and who is going to form the heavy myromycin, who is going to form the light myromycin and who is going to form the thin filament, how many types of proteins are present in the thin filament and what are the filamentous proteins like that number of questions are possible. All these are the contractile proteins uh, you have to remember but you know troponin and tropomyosin these two are called regulatory proteins. Why they are called regulatory proteins I will explain. Now I want to explain the anatomical aspects of the muscle that is why I am mentioning all the structural aspects and now if you observe the head of myosin. The head of myosin <coughs> contains actin binding sites. See my dear friends, this is the thin filament and this is the thick filament, isn't it? And this is the actin filament. In order to catch the actin filament, in order to bind with the actin filament, this is the thin filament and this is the head of myosin. In order to bind with the thin filament, here one site should be there. The site, the site is very important, receptor is very important. See in order to execute the action of hormones, receptors are very important. So neurotransmitter substance is releasing and if a nerve cell has to take, any other cell if wants to take the uh, transmitter substance, uh, receptors should be there. Receptors are very important, without receptors no mechanism will be observed. So this is the thin filament and here also the receptors which are called active sites are present. To these, uh, here we should not use the word receptor, better to use the word active site, active site. See imagine this as a complete door. And in order to move the door, we will uh, catch the door or we will just hold the door at a specific point called door knob or door handle. The door handle or door knob is nothing but uh, the active site. The active site is the site where some action is possible. And now to this active site, the head of myosin will go and bind. The head of myosin will go and bind. So this is the site where the head of myosin will go and uh, Okay, will go and bind with uh, the thin filament. So that is the reason why it is called actin binding sites. Actin binding sites are present over the myosin, have to remember, very important in the neat aspect. And now these are ATP binding sites, why? Because in order to perform one action, in order to perform the action, ATP is required. So ATP binding site is the site for binding of ATP. In fact, here one enzyme is present called ATPase enzyme is present, which helps in breakdown of uh, ATP into ADP, adenosine triphosphate is uh, hydrolyzed to form ADP, adenosine diphosphate in, and inorganic phosphate I will explain. And now two sites are present over the head, actin binding sites for binding with the thin filament, ATP binding sites for binding with the ATP. So these two sites are present and this is the tail, heavy myromycin, light, my, light myromycin. These are all the important aspects of uh, ultra structure of muscle. So here troponin and tropomyosin are going to play a very important role. How they are going to play an important role, I am going to explain this in uh, the mechanism of muscle contraction in my coming video. Do not miss the mechanism of muscle contraction in the coming video. Thank you my dear friends, that is all about this session.